Hi guys, welcome to Real Street TV. My name is Marcus Lee and I'm joined by my wonderful guests, Liz Mitten and CJ Lee. And today we are talking about employment and social media, but we are talking about when people lose their jobs when they say something on social media. <laughs> now, you might think if someone says something inappropriate, yes, they should definitely lose their job and the company wants rid of that person. But then again, you might also take the angle that, well, what you do at work is one thing and what you do away from work in your own private time, what you write on your Facebook, your Twitter, your MySpace page, whatever you do is, is up to you. So the question I'm asking is, should what you do on social media be subject to what you do at your work? Should you lose your job if you say something inappropriate at should you, so I'll start that again. Should you lose your job if you say something inappropriate on social media? Liz, what do you think? It's a tricky one, but I'd say possibly because what you do on social media is a reflection of who you are, how you spell your time, spend your time, what your values are. And ultimately you're representing um, the company's brand, potentially. So if you say something inflammatory or racist or, you know, prejudice in some other way it's gonna have a negative impact you don't want to <laughs> employ somebody who's um racist somebody who gives off good vibes somebody who's going to damage your um profit line so yeah potentially there's no kind of separation now of um what you're doing private and what you do at work yeah it's look it's a tough one i um you know i i actually did a little bit of research and looked at you know whether it's is it legal to um, to fire someone or to suspend someone based on what's on their on their um, their personal profile. The, the difficulty is is that you know what we put out there on social media basically becomes part of the public domain, and once it's in the public domain, then it is open to scrutiny. And you know employers are increasingly using social media not just to see what their employers are doing kind of when they're off the clock, but also prior to employers being made employed, um, employers are increasingly using social media and Google searches to check whether or not those people meet up to the, the values and the characteristics of their companies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's naive of us not to think that companies are kind of you know searching kind of you know our personal brand definitely sorry just to go for a bit of a tangent when people lose their jobs something that always makes me smile by the way I, i'm just going to just say it up front if someone says something inappropriate on social media yeah i think they should be fired and i think good and mm. i think they should be named and shamed as well um, but something that often makes me laugh is when someone says something inappropriate so, for example, there was a case recently, uh, a guy in the United States, a British guy living in the United States, said some racist comments to a Chinese family in a restaurant, filmed on social media, he's noticed, it goes worldwide, then he does an apology, and his apology is very well written, it's, it's written by a PR company, I'm very sorry, this doesn't represent who I am, I fully apologise to the family. I wish them all the best for the future. And I'm thinking, no, you don't, mate. No, you don't. <laughs> that to me seems like a, such a fake apology mm. because it's the right thing to say and it's, it's, it's worded nicely, but that's not the real you. And are you apologising because you really feel bad or are you just apologising because you've been caught? I think oh. it's because you've been caught. It could be a bit of both, but I think as well... I mean, you were saying that about naming and shaming. I don't think people should be named and shamed. I think, you know, if somebody's committed a crime, then, you know, the police will get involved and it should be dealt with that way. But I think social media is so powerful. If you name and shame people, it can wreck people's lives. And I mean, I've often thought and shuddered about things that I've done in the past in the pre-social media age. And I've been really grateful that social media wasn't there and that there's no record of things that I got up to. So... Um, I don't know. I just feel like people make mistakes. People are at different places and there needs to be an opportunity for, I don't know, restoring people, training people. And I, I don't know who that guy was, but I mean, what about doing a, a real apology to the actual people? What about going on some real training? What about having to face the people and say a real apology rather than, I don't know, because people often are saying this phrase doesn't represent who I really am. And I think, wow, what does represent 
what you really are what was that then so i think more work could be done rather than just firing people because i think that's quite easy you know i think it's quite easy all it does is teach people to be quiet <laughs> um rather than actually getting to the core or getting to the root of some of those problems if we talk about racism or other kinds of prejudice we need to be i don't know doing more going deeper i think Look, I, I'm going to slightly disagree with you, Liz. I, I, I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not all out for. I'm not. I'm not all in. Sorry for out and out naming and shaming, but I do think that people are have to be less naive about the impact of their words and how those words can have a much wider. Um, effect on the people around them including the people that employ them for a mm -hmm. living mm -hmm. so you know I, I don't think you should be fired for your personal opinions but if you then put your personal opinions in the in the world you know on social media for mm -hmm. everybody to scrutinize or even in, because because obviously not every case has been a case of somebody putting it on their public media. Maybe they've put it on um, their, maybe they've only shared it with their friends and family. But somehow that still got out. It still maybe got to a news outlet or um, one of their friends has been less sympathetic and has shared it with a, a, a colleague or a manager or, 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 or the owner of a company. So mm -hmm. I just think we've got to be a bit wiser about... You know, what do we put out there and, and recognise that when you put something on social media, it's on there forever. You know, there are lots of examples of people putting something on social media and then realising, oh, maybe, you know, maybe I'd had a couple of drinks or I was in a particularly bad mood. Maybe I shouldn't put that on there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's really easy once you put something out there for somebody else just to go and take a photo of it and it's still out there so mm. i think we've just got to be a bit more savvy about you know if i've got a personal opinion that i think is going to be quite controversial um maybe i don't want to put that everywhere but actually mm. i'm there's nothing there's pretty much nothing i would say that i wouldn't put on my social media mm. yeah yeah um, same. Liz, i, I I am going to give you the final word, Liz, but I think I'm probably the the harshest and less gracious, least gracious of us all, <laughs> because I, I do think there needs to be consequences for 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 people's behaviour. Mm -hmm. Similar to what you said, CJ, I think you know it's un until people are caught, it's how how much more will they keep saying those things? Often, when people are caught doing something, you. If you do a bit of research, you sometimes find that they have a pattern of behaviour which is similar to what they've said. Um, yeah. I hate to make references to the the George Floyd case, but the the officer who committed that horrible act had a history of that behaviour, mm. and it was when it's caught on camera, that's when it's like, oh yeah, actually this this isn't the first time this guy has thought this. This isn't a drunken moment. This isn't mm. a one off. When people mm. say a comment, you know, about. That is that is racist. That is homophobic. That is sexist. Mm. Mm. If you look back, it's it's not always the first time they've said that. So when they say, "Well, it's it's not really me. It's not the real me. It was a one off. I I was mm. stressed. My, my 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 father went to hospital." Mm. I, I don't always fully believe that, and I'm not about capital punishment or anything like that. But yeah. I think something needs to hit home and it needs to hurt and it mm. maybe needs to last a while. It needs to last a few years yeah. so that really resonates with that person. You know, to to really make them want to change their ways. I mean, I'm saying yeah. that, but Liz, you say something nice. To, yeah, no, to, to I'm, I mean, I do. I, I agree with you. There needs to be some consequences, and I think there are degrees of this. But I mean, if you look at some of the stuff around J.K. Rowling in the past couple of weeks, and I'm not saying uh, I don't agree with her, but the guy who was really going after her and criticising her comments about the trans community had himself several years before, after he he, he hit on her, someone went and dug up his past. And he'd said very offensive comments about the trans community as well. But somehow he was kind of forgiven a bit more. And I think lots of people say really inappropriate stuff. And I'm not saying there shouldn't be consequences, but I think there has to be space not to completely destroy people's lives. Because I think we're just becoming more and more unforgivable. We're becoming more judgmental. And I think our views getting um, more polarised. It's almost like everyone has to line the thoughts up or, or we will destroy you. <laughs> so um, that's all I think. Yeah. yeah. Food for thought, guys. Food for thought. <laughs>